Hi everyone, I'm Kofi from Film Club and this is one of our Young Ambassadors, Jack. Hi, I'm Jack and we'd like to welcome you to today's webcast which is coming to you live from the Edinburgh International Film Festival where we're broadcasting interviews with filmmakers all week. We're here today with director Penny Wilcock and Zimbo who features in the documentary film One Mile Away which is screening here at the festival. So just before we get started, I'd just like to say we always love to hear your thoughts and comments throughout this interview. So you can send these to us via Twitter by putting at Film Club UK before every tweet. You can text us on the number, which should be scrolling across the screen. Or you can email us at joey, that's J-O-E-Y, at filmclub.org. Also, I'd just like to say, if we encounter any technical hitches today, please do bear with us and we'll sort them out as soon as we can. So, let's get started. Welcome to Penny and Zimbo. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. As we mentioned, you are here with your documentary film, One Mile Away. Could you tell us a little bit about the film and what were your roles in making it? Well, I'm the director of the film and I direct fiction as well as documentary. So I made a film called One Day in Birmingham um, in 2007, 8, 9, over that period. And I researched um, the two big gangs in Birmingham, the Burgers and the Johnsons, who have been going for about 20 years. And I made friends with people on both sides. And I made the film One Day, which some of you might have seen, that, was, that had a lot of music in it as well, was a fiction, on the burger side. And then about, um, well, 18 months ago, I got a phone call from Shaba, who's over there in the corner. And he said that he'd had um, an encounter where he thought perhaps something bad was going to happen to him because he's from the Johnson side. And he thought maybe it was time to see if they could either get a truce or get some peace going between the, the two gangs. And because I was the only person that he knew who was friendly with people from both sides, he asked if I would help. And I said yes. And One Mile Away documents our attempts to bring people together. I've actually got a question here from one of our film club audience. And it's from Tanvi in Newnham School. Uh, it's quite a good question, actually. Who or what inspired you to first become a filmmaker? Gosh, I mean, I had an unusual story because I didn't start making films until I was in my 30s. And literally, I was a youth worker for a while. And I did some plays with some of the young people. And then they said, oh, we're tired of making uh, doing plays. What can we do? And I said, well, we'll make a film for Channel 4. But I didn't realise he was supposed to go to film school or get a commission. So <laughs> I just went around telling people that's what we were doing. And people believed me because I yeah. believed it. So I kind of borrowed equipment and everything. We made a little film. And then, very strangely, somebody from Channel 4 came to this film workshop, saw the material they had there, saying, have you got anything else? And they said, well, this woman came in and she made this film. Yeah. And uh, they bought it for Channel 4, so I was Fantastic. telling the truth after all. So I, I just went and did it, <laughs> was how it happened. That's really good advice for our film clubbers, actually. Just do it, it's yeah. very proactive. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. So, Penny, in the film One Mile Away, you seem to have a very good relationship with all the gang members. Uh, could you explain how you got to know them and Zimbo so well, and how you got them to trust you? I mean, it's all about time, isn't it, and relationships. So I suppose when I first arrived and I was doing the research for one day, I think people initially probably quite suspicious, wondering whether I had some other agenda or yeah, whether yeah, I was course. working with the police or something like yeah, that, you know. Easy, just thought, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But luckily, actually, Shabba, in fact, had seen Mischief Night, which was a film that I'd made, and I think you... Christopher Simpson, who you just interviewed before, was yeah. in my film <laughs> Mischief Night, which is very... <laughs> yeah, is so weird. he knew that I was really, really yeah. was a filmmaker. So initially, I suppose people are a bit apprehensive, you know, but because I kept coming back and eventually people think, well, she can't really be, you know, lying for all this time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then you click with people, don't you? It's like, I've, you know, Shabba and I have had our disagreements, as Zimba and I have, but basically, you know, you get to know people and you care about each other and trust builds up. It and time, it's, it, it just to, takes yeah, time, course, definitely. yeah, definitely. I mean, you can't just breeze in somewhere and say, oh, I'm going to make a film about gangs, and people would obviously tell you to get lost. You yeah, know? yeah. 
But uh, I think you have to understand that people are worried because most people approach them with fear or, you know, um, have a, a, a judgment, whereas I don't. I think if you're growing up in a certain environment and that's what you see, that's what you're going to do. It doesn't yeah. mean you're a bad person. It yeah, just yeah, means that's all you know, you know. Yeah. And maybe if you know something else, you'll do something else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm quite interested, uh, Zimbo, at what point did you get really involved in the film? Um, to be fair, I got involved, really got involved, like after the film was basically filmed, I started to get involved, like two thirds down the line. Right, it, took, okay. it, it took a while. Bear Shabba was on my case for ages. <laughs> I mean, we <laughs> hounded him. <laughs> for ages, for <laughs> ages. And I initially didn't, I initially weren't even getting involved. Like even the, the scene that with me in there, I was just going there to just make them know what I think. Like, right, okay. Obviously I've heard about, everyone knows what's going on. So I just thought, yo, to keep bothering me, I'm just gonna go and let them know. <laughs> nah, Cause that's how, so that's how it was. Yeah, to yeah. keep bothering me, I'm just gonna let them know what it is. And then that's it. They won't, they won't see me again. And then yeah. that's, they just kind of built up from there. Right. Okay. Mm. Cool. So Penny, how did the lives of the gang members change from beginning to end of the film, and what impact did the film have on them? Well, I mean, one thing is that people say gang members like you kind of you do some ceremony and you get a special ticket. It's not like that. You know, if you're grown up in a certain neighbourhood, you're kind of affiliated whether you want to be or not. You know, some people are more active than others. Yeah. Yeah. To know but, what a gang is, isn't it? Because yeah, everyone says a, gang like a gang's just a group of people. A group yeah. of bankers is a gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. We've got a little we've got a little gang ourselves, and Penny's been involved since. So yeah. it's just yeah. a group of people that come together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It has very a bad no connotation. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just labelled in a bad way. Yeah, and and people, you know, because the Burgers and Johnsons are notorious, but actually some of it is just your friends, isn't it, that you mm. grow up with and Probably. you hang out Family with. So as well. I think one of the things was, um, I think we've all affected each other. I would say my life has become much more interesting from knowing you guys, and mm. hopefully that's a mutual thing, you know, that we've I gone on a journey together. I my life's together. changing dramatically, to be fair. It's, got, mm. it's peak right now, there's a lot of work going on. Tell oh. us a bit more about that then. Why why has it changed uh, so dramatically? To, oh, to be fair, I ain't never worked in it. Like, okay. never. I'm working now. Like, for the past seven, eight weeks. For the past seven, eight weeks, I was working in London. And we was working at um, the Rare Day office. And, okay. basi and basically, I was working with um, a guy called in Isaac Denzu. Now, my man, he's, he kind of guided me just to do the, everything. It, it just, it's like a mentor, really. Oh, really? We've built up a and resource built, pack. Yeah, so what you? we've done is wrote like three resource packs. We've wrote a resource pack, and the resource pack are like a program, like a, a, a three or four day course or a okay. six week course. Now, one's based around a documentary, right. and that's based on about bringing the community together. And another one is like, oh, okay, the one that said, when they say bringing the community together, the riots brought the community together, but it was a bad thing. So yeah. one thing they have to do is think of something positive that will bring the community together. Brilliant. And then another lesson is about just about what divides, get, what divides the communities. Yeah. So that's one. Yeah. Then we've got another program involving music and drama. Yeah. We've based it around two subjects. The music part is breaking the cycle, breaking the chains. And the um, drama part is leaders and followers. So we come up with two different pieces to put together a live show. We're actually um, working in a school in London at the moment, Copeland Community. Okay. At the right now, um, doing a pilot for that program. So, and that's going really well. With the kids who who are really vulnerable, who don't want to go to school, who are turning up because, at the moment, the only people who go into schools to say you shouldn't get involved in you know, guns and knives and crime are the police, yeah. who are the last people anybody's going to listen to, yeah. you know, so it's much more effective to have you, who you know from your own experience, you know, the price that you that's pay for that. That's how my life's been changed, isn't it? I'm, I'm that's grafting fantastic. <coughs> I'm really grafting good. that hard. Yeah. Yeah. hard. Sounds like some really good stuff has happened. Yeah. So, yeah, we've affected each other, I suppose, is, is really the answer, you know, mm. that we're all working yeah. together towards a common aim, you know, because... Yeah. I remember the first Christmas that we were started working on the film, there was a, a white woman called Joanna Yates in Bristol who was murdered. And it was all over the news, 24-7, for two weeks until they yeah. caught this guy that had killed her. At the same time, there were four black kids in Peckham who were killed. I, I don't know their names, neither does anyone else. And yeah. I think that's not right. You know, life is a life. 
and you know unless we do something about it unless mm. really you guys do something about it so you're not encouraging people yeah, yeah, down the wrong path so it's been life changing really for all of us i think yeah, i've got a sli this is a slightly controversial question i wonder how you feel about this it's quite obvious i mean i watched it last night i thought it was really really powerful stuff but it, you really get the sense in the film that it's very difficult to get both gangs to talk to each other. And you really saw the stresses of that. Did you, as a documentary filmmaker, ever feel that you were maybe not necessarily making the situation any better? And did you have any reservations about actually doing the project? I had a lot of reservations. I spent a year not sleeping, really, and, and Shabba spent a year with his hair falling out, you know. It was, it was very worrying, and I, I worried a lot that by getting involved, even though I'd been asked, somebody called me, you know, so my friend Shabba called and said, will you help? And so I'd started with a good intention that somehow by being very naive, I was going to make things worse, that people were going to get killed because of me. So, yeah, no, it was very, it was yeah, very yeah. worrying. Yeah. But they didn't. No, all I'm saying is I was worried, yeah. definitely, yeah. More about other people, but sometimes also about myself. You know, I just think, I mean, what am I doing? You know, yeah. I, I don't, not a conflict resolution expert. I'm <laughs> yeah. just a filmmaker, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm white and I live in London and I, it's just, just yeah. none of it made any sense, really. It was just, it was really because from the heart, you know, because we cared about each other. Oh, you can tell other. that from the film. Yeah, you can tell that that's what it film. was. But yeah, no, it's not easy. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, I mean, you come from Glasgow, you're the same situation there. It's not a black thing. If you're in East London, certain areas, they're Bengali gangs, you know, or in you, Liverpool, they'll be white. Yeah. So it's really something that happens in certain areas. It's a youth thing, yeah, oh, people yeah, definitely. start fighting amongst themselves. And then it's very difficult because, like, to, to say that it's it's braver to say I'm not going to be part of it. You're not going to be, you know, a pussy or whatever. If you go, I'm I'm not taking part in this. That yeah. actually you you can yeah, you can be it's strong. All, it's all about like it's all about like the rules that the youth or just the rules that a certain group of people live by. And it. it's, yeah. it's and that way of life. It's it's obviously it needs to be changed, and it's only going to get changed if the ones that are living it or the ones that are. What's the word? Like saying this is how you should be living. Change that in it. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's the role models, in yeah. it, isn't it? It's like the people who were inviting you into that life yeah, yeah, yeah. when you were younger were maybe only, you know, within ten years older than you. And now, I don't think, I don't, and it's uh, and it's not even inviting you because you don't literally, no one literally gets invited. You're invited by the the glamour or what you believe to be mm. glamour. That's what you're. That's what's yeah. inviting you, and you're thinking, yeah. yo, this is what I want to do. Yeah, that's yeah. where I want to be. That's where I want to go. Yeah, of course. We, we should be glamour. We should be glamorizing more positive things. To be fair, definitely. Then mm. issues will start to be resolved. Yeah. Mm. Cool. We've got a couple of questions yet. So, Fanny, um, music is obviously a key part of the film. Uh, can you just explain to the audience like what you do with the music, and also how did you come up with this idea? As I understand, you have a background in opera. I like. I mean, I love music. And I like very extreme music, so I'm not very keen on pop music, but I love opera and I love hip-hop and grime, you know, for example. So I love music that is big and that really moves you here, you know. So, mus And music is such a way that people communicate, you know. Sometimes, many times, you just get together and, like, YT, we just like... start freestyling. <laughs> yeah. So it's part of the way that people communicate anyway and tell stories. So I always knew that it should be part of it. We didn't do the music till quite late, when we knew kind of where it was going to fit into the film and what the message of the film was. So like the last track on it, Never Too Late, which is Zimbo's track, it basically tells the story of your life, doesn't it? To, to the point where you are now. Mm. I mean, it's a very sophisticated, amazing way of telling yeah. stories, isn't it? So, so actually breaking the film up like that, because I think in a way documentaries, if people are just going to be sitting on a chair going, oh, oh life is terrible and my friend was stabbed, yeah. nobody really wants to watch it, you know. So you have to make it a bit more lively, I think. Yeah. And hip hop and rap, very often used for saying very negative things. So it's quite interesting to think about using that music in a different way. Yeah. Which is for your big thing, well, isn't yeah, it? Right. It's my, that's my main point because I think a lot of the, a lot of the badness that happens, or even the lifestyle, has come from the music. And back in the day, I wouldn't have said that, you know, because yeah. I would have been like, no, it don't, no, it don't. But reality is, it does. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. a lot of things that it's like it's globalization and that's how yeah. you so if we if we change the message in the music yeah. change what we're saying in the music then maybe the perception of the youths will change in it yeah but it's, it's, a, it's a it's a journey right now because a lot of the youths ain't even respecting certain messages that you're trying to put out but i think it's for all like the artists that are getting respected to do the same thing instead of teaching the youth to pushing out negative messages in it. I'm trying not to, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, of course. instead of pushing out negative messages in it. And you have done it, haven't you, in the past? Yeah. There, oh, I'll push, I'll push out. No, yeah. I have done, I have done. But obviously, yeah. even doing that now, it causes, it, that's effect, that affects my life. Because, yo, just from little things like that, I have to deal with police now. Because police are looking into this and think, they're saying, no, oh, this is what this man's really doing. We need to, we've got him on Twitter, we've got him, we need to watch him, we need to be on him. Yeah. So it, it's got to a point where I couldn't even do that again, really, because yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting, a, there's people going to jail for their lyrics. So, you know, you have to be, everyone needs to be aware of what they're doing. Yeah, of course, of course. Just me personally, I found it quite a difficult film to watch. What age group would you recommend your film to? And what message do you hope that film clubbers will take away from it? Gosh, well... I mean, what we try to do is to make it work for young people, perhaps who do think that it's glamorous to live that lifestyle and who would be more likely to listen to them. And, and also for people perhaps like me who would like to know what's going it's on, like what's thinking. going on, because we're living on parallel worlds and I think it's important for everyone, for us to understand each other. So did, did you find it difficult, the language or? No, no, no it's yeah. just, uh, I found it quite a hard film to watch because that was, really what's going on, it was just right. quite brutal. T a tough film. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I actually yeah. just give the doc, that's why I respect it more, because normally when you see things like that, a lot of things are taken out of content or out of term, of or course. it's not showing what's really going on, but that just explained it. Yeah. And it, even at the end of it, you don't see, it's like, it's not saying there's a truce in Birmingham, because the reality of it is there's not still things, things can still happen, but it ain't how it used to be. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? It's not yeah. how it used to be. It's getting, things are getting better. People don't want to be living how they're living, so mm. things are getting better. People are trying to live a better life. Forget about the, the beef or the truth. People are actually trying to live a better life and do better things, so that's the main aim. Brilliant. Fortunately, I think we've <laughs> run out of a bit of time. Thank you so much to you, Penny and Zimbo. It was a really fascinating uh, chat we had there. Thanks, Jack. Thanks. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. No problem at all. Thank you.